In this video, we're going to talk all about images within PowerPoint 2016, and there's certainly a lot you can do with them, so let's go ahead and get into it. Now, to add in any kind of art asset in PowerPoint 2016, you're going to be looking at the Insert tab. There you'll see a section called Images, where you're allowed to add in pictures from your computer and also online images. So the difference between pictures and online pictures is when you click pictures, it's going to open up a dialog looking at your computer for local images. These are images that are located on your computer or possibly on a network resource like a shared drive. Now, when you go ahead and search online pictures, and this is one of the things that the 2016 Microsoft Office package is doing pretty well, is that it will open up a option for you to use the Bing image search in order to pull images from online into this document. So for instance, if I type in any kind of search term, let's say a name, uh, how about Chris? Let's you know put in my own name. It won't show me, but it will show someone named Chris. And uh, here we're going to get a bunch of different images. Now, one of the great things about the search here is that by default, it's showing Creative Commons images. Now, a Creative Commons image is under a different type of license. It's not copyrighted in the same way. Uh, you can go check all this information out on the Creative Commons official website, but Creative Commons images are going to be licensed under one of a few different categories, and those are going to basically be including Creative Commons attribution, where you can use an image inside of your work by just giving credit to the original author. You don't have to pay for licensing fees or royalty fees. And there are other types of Creative Commons licensing, um, including non-commercial, where you can't use it for commercial reasons, meaning you can't sell works that include that image. Now, the downside of this Creative Commons image search is that it doesn't show precisely what license it is, because there are different types of Creative Commons. Uh, but if you go through to the website and actually look at what kind of Creative Commons it uses, and then you can make sure that whatever presentation you're putting together actually complies with that. And you can do that fairly easily by clicking once on the image and then left clicking on the web resource location, the web address. For instance, if you wanted to check out the licensing for this information, you would click through to Wikipedia. And then when you have it open, you can left click on the image desired and from here, you can see in the bottom right hand corner that this is actually being used under fair use. So you do have to be careful because even if it says Creative Commons search, it's not flawless, obviously. However, you still can use this to look around for different images for your PowerPoint presentation. You just have to be careful with them and make sure you're not stepping outside of licensing bounds. Uh, like here, for instance, uh, publicdomainpictures.net. I'm aware of that website. So this image most likely is, in fact, uh, Creative Commons or public domain. So we'll take a look here and we'll just make sure it is in fact licensed public domain. Public domain images you can use freely. They're not owned by anybody. And when you have an image inside of your PowerPoint presentation, you're going to be given a lot of different options. For instance, if you click on remove background here when you have the image selected, then it's immediately going to highlight what the program actually thinks is the background. In this case, it is the white uh, space in the background. So this is very much like a green screen effect you got going on here. And you can manually mark areas to keep, areas to remove, and delete marks. But in this case, it already figured it out. It's very simple because it's just a plain white background. And we can go ahead and hit keep changes. And now you can see that with this image, even though we still have the apple, uh, there is no white background anymore that's overlapping this title over here. So that is a pretty useful effect for including images in your presentation. You've also got some correction tools, including sharpen and soften and brightness and contrast here. If you want to make an image very bright, you could use one of these options over here where it's incredibly bright. If you want it to contrast, you go down. Less contrast is up at the top and a darker image is going to be to the left. So it's a X, Y axis kind of grid you got going on here. You can also play around with the color, removing all of it completely by dropping the saturation to zero, making the color very, very vivid by increasing it to a 400% or to even a 300% is still very high saturation. Changing the tone of the colors, making it more of a yellow bright color with a high temperature, 
or a low cool look to the uh, image by dropping it to a low temperature like 4700K. And then one of the more fun options is to recolor the image. Now with this you could do something like change the color of the apple completely to a red or orange or something like that. And if we saw a background, you would notice that the background would change from white to whichever color we're selecting here. And they do have more options as well, black and white for instance. And you can choose any color you want with this kind of recoloring effect by going to more variations and just grabbing the color you want that apple to turn into. Similar to the remove background effect, you can target a color and make that transparent within your image. Now it's not going to be perfectly precise here because of course there's a lot of different colors in this image. It's not just one perfectly red apple. So if we click here where it's a bit green, you'll notice it removes a little bit of color, but it doesn't remove all of the green around it because those are actually different colors we're dealing with. So the transparent color effect here can only really be used with solid colors uh, simply because you don't have any extra options here um, to give it more leniency in which colors it actually removes, going a little bit past a precise red color to colors that are similar to it as well. And if we click down at the bottom of this drop down menu, picture color options gives us a lot more control over the color in this picture. For instance, we can mess around with color saturation manually, typing in exactly the percent we want. Color tone, if we can increase this to pretty much any level we want, if we want to make it look bright or more yellow or lower if we want it to be glue. You also have the recolor effect here as well. And you can resize the image using these text boxes. Of course, you don't have to do it that way. You can easily resize as well by left clicking on one of the edges and dragging and dropping it or rotate the image by clicking on the rotate symbol. The position options allow you to control which part of the slide it's actually going to appear in. So this is saying that it's 3.24 inches to the right and 1.14, uh, 1.15 inches down from the top left corner. Obviously, if we change this to the center, it's going to move it and dragging and dropping it would have the same effect as typing in a specific number in here. You can also give the image a title and put in a description for the image. In this case, it already had one because it brought it straight from Bing. Not something you normally need to do, but it's good to be aware of that. And similar to the effects you have for text, you have a lot of the same effects going on here, like the ability to add shadows. For instance, we can use a preset and give it kind of a drop shadow in the bottom right hand corner. Of course, it doesn't look perfect because this image is a little bit choppy after removing the background. Other effects include reflection, glow, having softer edges. Let's go ahead and uh, actually demonstrate that here. So with soft edges, it actually blurs the edge of all of the edges to make it look less sharp because without that effect, it does look a little bit choppy. Then you have 3D effects, which can take this image and try to give it a 3D appearance, even though it's actually just a 2D option. You've also got options here for taking the image and making it appear more 3D, such as adding a bevel to it, which is similar to how you add a bevel to uh, text. And then at the very bottom, you've got artistic effects, which can take our image and basically change the way it's presented in very interesting ways. For instance, if we use a light screen, it almost looks like we're looking through a screen to actually view our image. So these artistic effects drastically change how our image is actually going to be portrayed. Another option would be film grain, which makes it look like maybe it was on a VHS tape or some kind of really old stock footage. And you've got other options to play around with here as well. Now, you will notice that a lot of these same effects that you can find under color and color picture options are also included in picture effects. You got your shadow, reflection, glow, yada, 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 same stuff going on there. And then over here on the last tab, we have fill options. So when you have your background removed, we can actually fill that in with any solid color we want, a gradient. Or we could even put a texture or a picture as the background to this picture. Patterns allow you to give it a very simple design. Break. 
Patterns allow you to give it a very simple design, which you can change the colors on by selecting the foreground and background colors. And one option that we didn't see before with text boxes is that you can add a slide background fill. So what this is doing is it's taking the background that would be in the slide itself and applying it here. For instance, if we go ahead and change the design on the slide, you'll see that immediately it applies the same design to this image itself. If you had a group of different images inside of your slide and you wanted to organize it in a fancy way, you could go to picture layout, which will convert it into a smart art graphic, basically taking the image and then organizing it in a specific layout. So in each of these cases, um, it usually adds in a text box that you can title the image and you see that it's also throwing borders around them. But if we had multiple images selected, then it would be doing the same effect to all of them. So for instance, if we had multiple images, we could do a picture grid. So let's go ahead and do that right now by adding in some extra images. All right, so we now have four images of an apple. So let's select all of them by holding control down. And now if we go to picture layout and picture grid, it'll automatically resize them to be equal. Throw a border around each of the images, though you can't see it on the white ones because this border is white by default. We can, of course, customize the style here by choosing between the different smart art styles. You may not just want a white border. For instance, the intense effect kind of makes it zoom out a bit. If we want a black border, we can go over here to this option cartoon. And it looks like this option, yeah, it's going to put it on its side. That's actually really neat. And if you didn't like the layout you chose, you can always switch over here to a different one like this a masonry style. And once you have the smart art graphic created by taking all of these images and converting them, you'll notice that you can actually move everything at once, but you don't have to. You can always move the individual images within the smart art graphic as well. All right, so enough of that. Let's go to screenshot and photo album. What screenshot allows you to do is immediately take a screenshot of any other window you have open on your computer and add it in to PowerPoint 2016. So for instance, the only window I have open right now is OBS, Open Broadcaster Software. It's what I use to record these videos. So I'll go ahead and click that. And so you can see that just by doing that, we have a perfect screenshot of my other window. Photo Album allows you to insert a whole bunch of pictures into your document at once. So you would do this from files on your hard drive. So we could click here and open up this folder where I have some other images. Uh, from some other videos that I've created. So I'll just select these first five images, add them in, check them to indicate that I actually want them to be added into this document. And you'll notice down here at the bottom that you have some options for determining the layout of the album. For instance, you can decide how many pictures do you want to show on each slide. By default, when you import an album like this, it makes a new slide out of each image. So we could have four pictures and a title on one single slide. And you see over here that it gives you a little graphic to represent that. So there'll be a title at the top and four images below that. The shape of the uh, frame of the image, by default, it's rectangle, but you can choose some other options down below. Then down here at the bottom, you can choose a theme to use with those different slides that are gonna be created. And this is basically the equivalent of choosing a design for your entire presentation because when these photo albums are added by default, it adds them into a brand new presentation. So let's go ahead and use organic, select it and hit create. And you'll notice that it makes a presentation for us and it will add four images per slide, assuming that there are four images left with the title to that document. And in the first slide, it gives you a nice title slide saying photo album by the name of the person creating the document. Now there are a few different photo options we haven't talked about here, including compress picture, which will take your image and compress it to reduce the file size. If you hit change picture, it allows you to take this image and swap it out for another image, either on your computer or the internet. And then reset picture is going to reset all of the formatting changes that you've made to this image. So for instance, if you've changed its color to, let's say this red over here, and you go and hit reset picture, then that's going to disappear immediately. It's going to return it to its original. Now, uh, there's also an option in the drop down menu. If you've increased or decreased the size, you can go do reset picture and size. 
which does everything reset picture does, but it also returns the size to the original. And that does mean the original size of the image as it was imported into this PowerPoint presentation. Over here under picture styles, I'm sure you've been noticing this bar for a while. Uh, what this allows you to do is actually frame your picture, any of these different styles. So we have a normal picture here, but it doesn't have any borders or anything. We can click on these different picture styles to actually take our image and put it in a frame. And some of the frames are black, some of them are white, some of them are rectangular, some of them are circular, and some of them have a curved bevel shape to the edges of what would otherwise be a rectangle. So if you're looking for a way to improve the images inside of your slideshow, you can try using the different picture styles in order to do that. Just like tables, you also have the option to arrange your images or to manipulate the size of your images. But one other option that they don't have for tables is the ability to crop your images. And this is specific to images. So if you have a portion of your image that you actually don't want to display on the screen, you would use the cropping option to do this. So if we click this and go to crop, what we can do is actually adjust what's going to be shown inside of this document. So whatever in the crop is what's going to be kept and everything else is going to be removed. So all we need to do to complete the crop is simply left click out here in the white space and there we go, we have a cropped image of this number four. Pretty cool. Now you probably noticed that the crop in this case was a bevel break. Now you probably noticed that the crop in this case was a bevel rectangle. You can actually change that to basically any kind of cropping shape that you want. For instance, you could even do an up arrow if you want. So we go ahead and use the crop up arrow and it adjusts our crop into an arrow. We can go back and recrop that course because when you change the shape it's going to change what's actually going to display and we can just adjust that until we get it right and then left click out of it again. If we don't like the ratio of our image we can adjust that aspect ratio to portrait or landscape so if we have a landscape aspect ratio this arrow is going to become much wider than it is tall so let's go ahead and do 16 by 9 and you can see we've got an arrow here but it's wider than it is tall. And that's because 16 by 9 would be widescreen. So you're expecting wider than it is tall. Now these last two options at the bottom, fill and fit. If we used fill and our image that we were trying to crop was actually too small, what it would do is adjust the image size, basically stretching it until it filled this entire shape. If we use fit, then it will reduce the size if it's larger until it fits perfectly within our shape. So by using fit, it's going to adjust the image so that it fits within this shape. Now how it does this is by adjusting the height and width until the height and width of the image is equal or lower in the case of the width over here to the shape we're trying to crop to. Now the reason this four isn't fitting within this crop anymore is because the crop has a 16 by nine ratio and the image is a one to one perfect square ratio. However, we could fix that by going back to the aspect ratio and cropping back to a square and now it's gonna fit again. So that's all for pictures and images within PowerPoint 2016. As you can see, there's a lot of different effects you can apply to them and they are very useful tools as they are with any other type of document. Until the next video, I'll see you then.